a program committed to delivering information that's important to you and your community. Hello and welcome back to Life Esteem. Always glad to have you as a viewer here at this program. Hey, today we're going to talk to Blake Lynch. He is the Community Policing Coordinator for Harrisburg City, and uh, he's doing a fantastic job. And we're so glad to have him on. Blake, how you doing? I'm great. Thank yeah, you so much yeah, for having me. All right. Hey, man, successful event. Uh -huh. What was it called again? The National Night National Out? Night Out. National Night Out. Man, National Night Out. oh man, that was your first time coordinating that, I understand. First time coordinating it. It was a lot of fun, a lot mm -hmm. of hard work that went into it, but mm -hmm. it was really put on by a lot of people in the city. Mm -hmm. They came out and showed a lot of support. Yeah. And then a lot of people that, of course, mm -hmm. work for the city gave a lot of time and effort behind us. So our public works, uh, mm -hmm. our police officers, first responders, yeah. everyone came out mm -hmm. to support. Fire so department. it was great. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it was an impressive show or display mm -hmm. of, you know, city workers. Yeah. Like you said, the fire department, the police, yourself, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, good stuff. The commissioner okay. was there. Yes, commissioner yes, was there. Yeah. And you guys were there as well. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you so much yeah. for coming out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was down at uh, Morrison Park. Yes. Uh, which yeah. you commonly yeah. know also as Sunshine Park. But you know, yeah. we still call it Morrison, but it was a great time. And thanks to the community for showing up. Yes. As, as they did. Mm -hmm. you know. Over 1,500 people definitely came oh, out last definitely. night. Yeah, over three them. hours. And oh. it, it was great. Just nonstop uh, yeah. of kids getting to meet officers, uh -huh. children yeah. getting to, uh, to go do dance parties. And mm -hmm. uh, we had canine demonstration mm -hmm. as well as a lot of community vendors. So we're really excited. You know, I also like the, like the fact that the kids could actually get in the cars yes. and all that kind of stuff, you know. And the fire uh, and and the the fire fire yeah. yeah. And the fire yeah. yeah, to really yeah. touch it mm -hmm. and see how it is. That's good stuff. So tell us about your position, though. You know, what exactly does it entail? And what do you do? And how long have you been in your position? Yeah, absolutely. I've been in my position since March okay. of this year, 2018. Oh, just in March. Okay. Yeah, just in March. Okay. And uh, my job as community policing coordinator is to get out into the community mm -hmm. to really help build bridges between our police department mm -hmm. and the community in which we serve. Mm -hmm. To really work to try and better that relationship, to really try to get out and help address issues that our neighbors uh, may have, even mm -hmm. with each other, maybe neighborhood disputes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that we try to focus on, like quality of life issues. Yeah. So those things are very important when uh, you may call 911 or the non-emergency number and you may not have an officer mm -hmm. respond uh, to something which is an emergency to you but mm -hmm. with regards to a lot of priority that goes on in the city mm -hmm. might not get the first uh, crack with regards to our, our officers responding so if it's not um, something that's a priority one, mm -hmm. uh, like um, a shots fired or a car accident with injuries or different mm -hmm. things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, we try to respond to a lot of them. With having a city of 40,000 people mm -hmm. um, in it almost every given day, mm -hmm. our officers are really tasked with trying to make sure we work on those issues. So the unit that I'm a part of, which mm -hmm. is the community policing unit, mm -hmm. uh, we have about five officers assigned as well as a supervisor, Corporal Josh Hammer. He's my partner. Uh, so we work together to get out in not just the schools and mm -hmm. to the nonprofits, but also going out on neighbors' porches and actually walking the street and walking the block and talking with neighbors and finding out what's going on with them. So whether it's illegal dumping or it's um, neighborhood disputes or it's other things that might be going on, drug investigations, those are things that really we can call to attention and re uh, provide the proper resources for. Well, that's amazing, uh, and you know, I think interesting enough. I knew you in another life. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and in that way, in regard to the work that you did, okay, mm -hmm. at the Hilton. Yes. Okay. From that, mm -hmm. how long were you at the Hilton? I was at the Hilton for about four and a half years. Yeah, probably, yeah. And then after that, I went to the Boys and Girls that's Club. That's right. Right. Exactly. And I was the director of development there, and their lobbyist. So, mm -hmm. um, really involved in the community and trying to double down mm -hmm. on those efforts. Mm -hmm. And you are in this community. Yes. You graduated uh, from Susquehanna Township, but yes. you went to CD East work a while as well. I did mm -hmm. um, and grew up in Steelton and Swatair Township mm -hmm. uh, so in Oberlin and you know for about 15 years so I love Central PA uh -huh. uh, after graduating Susquehanna Township went to Messiah College mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I we live in the area so uh, it's great we mm -hmm. also uh, work at Milton Hershey School we're oh, relief house parents as oh, well so, so when I say we're committed to our next generation and mm -hmm. doubling down on Absolutely. our community efforts we really okay. are. That's oh great. man I learned a lot about him. <laughs> 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 yeah. I thought uh, that I did know. Yeah. Uh, the side, I didn't realize you were a graduate of Messiah. Did you uh, say your wife as well? Uh, no, my wife went to Penn State. And oh, she went I to Penn went State. to Messiah. And you went to Messiah. Fantastic. Okay. Right, great. So when you think about our community, and we have a great community, but like every community, we have challenges, mm -hmm. right? So what do you think are the most um, pressing challenges when it comes down to police community relations uh, today? I think it's really the national narrative. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. There are unfortunate incidents that take place nationally mm -hmm. where a small 
population or a small portion of officers are highlighted for negative things. And they mm -hmm. should be held accountable if those things are deemed to be inappropriate mm -hmm. actions taken. Right. Uh, there have been some things uh, regionally that have happened in other municipalities and other departments in the state. Um, there's an incident, unfortunately, that happened in Pittsburgh. So other things mm -hmm. like that, which cast a negative light on policing as a whole. Mm -hmm. I really find that to be unfortunate because with every single profession that happens. Yes. Um, you yeah. have bad doctors, you have bad pastors, yeah, um, right. you have the whole mm -hmm. sex abuse mm -hmm. thing going on right now with, um, with priests. the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of things, but there's also mm -hmm. great mentors who were priests. There are great mentors who are officers. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that we're really trying to help because in Harrisburg, especially Harrisburg City Police Department, we haven't run into a lot of those incidents. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that go on that take place every single day yeah. that people don't see mm -hmm. that uh, aren't publicized, whether it is you know, playing basketball on the courts with kids or it's uh, feeding the homeless um, behind the scenes or you know, helping that person mm -hmm. out find their car. There's a lot of things mm -hmm. that go on and mm -hmm. really try to highlight those for the officers and get them to know each other better. Good mm -hmm. stuff, real good stuff. Um, when you were a young person, mm -hmm. okay, what were your feelings and thoughts about police officers? I mean, did you feel that they were there to be in security safe for you and you wanted to have relations or did you tend to be resistful and kind of stand back? How did you feel? Um, I did not have a negative experience with officers when I was young. All right. um, I did have a negative experience with an officer when I got older after college. Oh, did you? Um, mm -hmm. And what that really did was it kind of, I had so many positive experience with first responders mm -hmm. in the bank that when I had that negative experience, it was like, this isn't everybody. Yeah. This okay. is just this guy. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of what we're hoping as well as, mm -hmm. you know, when we talk to children and they get to see Corporal Hammer, they get to see our officers in a positive light, whether they're at their school or at a community mm -hmm. fair or a national night out, mm -hmm. it's a lot of deposits that we're putting in the bank mm -hmm. to really try to make a positive impact. And you have first impressions and first um, experiences with our officers. Mm -hmm. Those things are great. Uh, and so you remember those things and you, you right. know, talk about those things to a lot of people. And by doing so, I think it really comes back tenfold. Mm -hmm. And so, again, when there comes a negative experience or when you see something or you hear a friend talking about somebody, mm -hmm. it's like, well, that's not everybody because mm -hmm. I know Officer Smith and he helped me out. Or I know, that's you right. know, Firefighter Charlie and he's great, right. you know. So mm -hmm. those things are really what we're trying to build on. Exactly. One of the things that's always been perplexing to me, and this is a national concern, sure. and that is that two people have a, a confrontation. Mm -hmm. You know, one shoots the other, stabs the other, whatever happens. And then the police come mm -hmm. talking to the victim, mm -hmm. and the victim won't cooperate. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, I'm not going to talk to you, this and that. And then they try to take the matters in their own hands or whatever they try to do, mm -hmm. which even makes it worse. Right. And why is that so prevalent in our communities? I know you can't answer it, but I mean, sure. how do we address yeah. that where uh, folks stop seeing our helpers, mm -hmm. you know, I, I understand all the other ramifications and issues mm -hmm. about uh, police officers may have done something wrong and they get all that attention. But generally, you know, 99% of the folks mm -hmm. are there to help us to protect and serve. So it doesn't hurt our community when we don't speak up and, and you know, rid this thing instead of trying to take matters in our own hands. At least that's been my experience because I just don't get it. You know, you've been mugged, you've been shot, whatever, and now you won't cooperate. Mm -hmm. I, what is that all about? Does that frustrate you, or how do you yeah. see that? Yeah, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I understand, but I, I don't understand. I got you. Um, mm -hmm. I understand because, unfortunately, when the police leave, now what? Yeah. So mm -hmm. you tell on your neighbor, and he gets locked up, he gets mm -hmm. released on bail, he's back out now, what? Mm -hmm. um, and it comes with this negative stigma of no snitching or stop snitching, which yeah. mm -hmm. is a totally different thing. It, it's it it's not is. what it's, it's not really what it is right, right now. Mm -hmm. um, stop snitching is really about drug dealers. Yeah. And what it was is, you, you know, you're selling on this block, I come in on the block, you're messing with my money. Mm -hmm. And so what I'll do is I'll snitch you out to the police, get you caught up, and then now you're yeah. locked up, yeah. and now I get my block back to make money. Mm -hmm. That's there's no snitching. That's, that's right. what that's well, what that, that really that's meant. Really meant. Right. Okay. It's not when you get hurt or you see something, you don't say something. Yeah. That's just dumb. That's dumb. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you get hurt and I watch you get hit with a baseball bat, of course I'm going to make sure because that's you're someone's mother, you're mm -hmm. someone's aunt, you're someone's sister. Mm -hmm. You know, think about that if that were you. Mm -hmm. And right. so trying to put it personally, it's like think if you, if you were my sister, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you would want you would probably get mad at me for not saying anything right. because that hurts you. Right. Um, and so that's unfortunate. But the thing about it is when those situations happen, mm -hmm. it's really about street cred. It's yeah. really about uh, trying to be tough mm -hmm. and try to really uh, fit into an environment which they're forced to. And a lot of times it's children, as kids. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's something we have to work to change. 
Absolutely, we yeah, do. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, that's served so many communities. Now, this particular position is relatively new. No, it's uh, actually it's, not. I um, mean, new, but how long has it been in place about? This position, yeah. um, prior to me, was actually, there was a gentleman named Dave Patera yes. who was mm -hmm. in this position yes. before me. Dave, yeah. mm -hmm. Yep, and Dave's a great guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so Dave was no longer with the city. The position just stayed open for a while because mm -hmm. we needed to fill officers first. Okay. Um, no offense to the position that I hold or anything, but the commissioner's heart was, I need to get more officers on the street. Right. Yeah. And so that took some time, and so that's mm -hmm. kind of why there was a little bit of a lag time between mm -hmm. when Dave left and my, me coming in. But prior to Dave, was there such a position? Dave there Dave? was. It was held by another mutual friend of ours, Brian Waite. Um, oh, so he I had a position. Uh -huh. See? Yeah. See? Yeah. So okay. the position, the, the difference with this position, though, uh -huh. is that now those those gentlemen, actually, before I even Oscar Douglas, I think, who works for Patty Kim's yeah. office, mm -hmm. so he held the position. Mm -hmm. he had so, a, I didn't know that was his position. Yeah, yeah. so there's a lot of people that, in some type of role, serve the community mm -hmm. alongside the police. Mm -hmm. But this position, the change was is that this is now part of the city uh, community policing unit. Yeah. So oh, okay. I actually have office that I get to work with directly Fantastic. to help me versus mm -hmm. they were kind of on their own mm -hmm. um, doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. So I work with Corporal Josh Hammer. He's my partner. We work together. I'm the yeah. civilian. He's the police. Okay. And we tag team together and that's how we can get things oh, done. Okay. That's great. Right. There's a big, um, I won't say debate, but a discussion around whether or not police should be in the schools. Mm -hmm. You know, and we've had police in the schools for years, of course, mm -hmm. but you know, that's still, uh, the question is whether or not that's a good thing. What's, what's your take on that at this I, point? I, I think, think it's, it's a great thing. I think okay. it should mm -hmm. be allowed. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, the Harrisburg School District is one of the largest school districts in the county, in the region, mm -hmm. and we're the only school district that does not have an SRO program, does not have a school resource officer program. But you did have at one point. I did. For years. At one time, and the district took yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now they don't. They do not, and mm -hmm. they're the only district in the mid-state that does not have an officer. In and schools. what's the advantage to having that program, from well, your standpoint? Community relations, getting to know mm -hmm. my officers, the getting officer. to know. We yeah. used to, and mm -hmm. it was great because you'd know Officer Joe, mm -hmm. and Officer Joe was there even when you, if you saw him outside, it's great because you, you could tell someone, it's like, oh, he helped me out, or, mm -hmm. you know, he provided resources, or he helped my parents exactly. with stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. it was great because you started to build relationships and seeing them in a positive light. Uh, so, of course, and then also the other side is, the officers are there to help decrease any criminality mm -hmm. at criminal activities, um, but then also skirt anything that may try to happen with fights or anything going on like yeah. that. Um, mm -hmm. But really the main part of it was to build relationships. relationships. Yeah. And so with that missing, mm -hmm. especially with our kids in the city, which face so much, mm -hmm. kind of limits uh, what we can do. Yeah, there was absolutely. a program at one time, and I got to give hats off to Rafika Muhammad, who started mm -hmm. the discussion, mm -hmm. and then uh, the school district stepped up. And it was called Disproportionate Minority Contact. Okay. And it's a national uh, concern. Mm -hmm. But it was that uh, African American students in particular and minority students in general had a disproportionate uh, contact mm -hmm. with police than other you know, groups mm -hmm. did. And so I know one of the issues about having police officers in the schools was that originally it seemed mm -hmm. as if this should have been there for that reason, in order to better understand police, had that, you know, coordination. But it seemed like it was just a whole lot of arrests were taking place or something. I don't mm -hmm. know what was going on. And so then the concern, because I was part of it, I think, I think Pat was as well, we were going into the schools with the probation officers mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. And we had a wonderful program. In fact, it got national attention. Great. And they were going to. But all of a sudden, it was, you could feel that pullback because it seemed as if the kids didn't get it. Mm -hmm. And it seems as if our kids start going to jail more often. We say, wait a minute, this is, what's that thing, the pipeline from mm -hmm. yeah, prison school to prison? Prison, 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 yeah. 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 I, I, I can say that concern. officers don't want to, they do not want to arrest mm -hmm. anyone, especially mm -hmm. children. They don't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's funny because it requires a lot of paperwork. <laughs> paperwork. But then also, yeah. no, we want to try to provide more positive resources mm -hmm. and warm handoffs into programs to help get people the things that they need, the resources they mm -hmm. need, especially our children. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So the last thing you want to do is really tarnish someone's record before they get started. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that time, we understand mm -hmm. it's quality of life, it's home issue, mm -hmm. it's parents missing. It's, there's a lot of things that go mm -hmm. into that, which sure. uh, disproportionately affects our community. Yeah. So yeah. that could also be a part of it because if, you know, your mom's working three jobs almost every shift, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then when she comes home, she's going straight to sleep, and you and your brother, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. yeah. YMCA mm -hmm. closes at 8, what are you going to do? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mom's not home. That's so, right. you know, that's when things happen. 
Um, mm -hmm. And so the single parent house, so there's a lot of things that go into that part, you know, yeah, as a part of the play. Well, yeah. Let me ask you this, one of the other things too that has brought up on several conversations is we don't see a lot of uh, particularly African American young men and women see uh, you know, law enforcement as a potential, you know, career path. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's unfortunate, too, mm -hmm. because if we don't have enough men and women, okay, African-American or other communities of color out there, it doesn't show role model type of one-on-one uh, -on -one with children. They don't see that as a potential, uh, you know, career path for them. Absolutely. Do you see that in our statistics as far as the Harrisburg City Police? How are we doing as far as? Statistically, when it comes to ethnic it breakdown, I mean, we could do better. Okay. Um, however, um, we really need to encourage more minority and women to get into law enforcement mm -hmm. positions mm -hmm. and not even just officers but mm -hmm. also other positions in the justice system. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking judges, we're talking uh, probation officers, we're talking uh, law clerks, we're talking a lot of people who have influence behind the scenes that people mm -hmm. don't see at the courthouse, at the county mm -hmm. level, at the state level, mm -hmm. um, probation and parole, you know, the U.S. Marshal Service. Right. There's a lot of people that uh, could be in places that have influence. Uh, even my mm -hmm. position, um, mm -hmm. being a minority and being in this type of position, having the opportunity to work with officers alongside them every single day and bring up issues and right. quality of life issues from personal experience mm -hmm. helps set the table and right. you know how we might address certain things as well. Mm -hmm. um, so these are all important aspects. We really uh, try to encourage recruitment efforts. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of people that go to different minority fairs, mm -hmm. um, you know, diversity councils, different things like that from the police department, as much mm -hmm. as the resources allow for us to do yeah. uh, and keep the department stretched at times. But our commissioner is African American, our deputy commissioner is African American, mm -hmm. and our captain is um, Hispanic. Mm -hmm. So in all three positions of leadership, mm -hmm. our minorities what for the Harrisburg women? Police Department. Are we seeing more women coming into law enforcement? Yeah, we just hired nine new officers officers, one was a woman, one was an African American, mm -hmm. um, which is great. Um, but we really try to encourage women to come in. And again, it's more of a male dominated field mm -hmm. yeah. as with construction and a lot of other things, mm -hmm. firefighting, you, you know, but we really would love mm -hmm. to see that. And actually Harrisburg is actually putting together a, um, a program to try and help ease costs for the academy as well, mm -hmm. especially for women and minorities to try and get more people to reflect the community in which we serve. Yeah. I noticed at one time there was a big discussion around uh, regional policing. Mm -hmm. In other words, you get rid of some of the, uh, I guess Township you call them. Girls. Yeah. That's a, that's and just yeah. Gonna, is there any more thought given to that? Or? That, was at a, that was a county assessment. So mm -hmm. you got to talk to county commissioners, you know, Priest right. and George Hartwick <coughs> and Hayes mm -hmm. about that and what their study deemed. Mm -hmm. um, there's Harrisburg City, I think, could not be a part of it. I think it would have to be yeah. regional and then Harrisburg City. There's over 150 officers at the Harrisburg City mm -hmm. Police Department. Mm -hmm. We're actually understaffed as well. There should be close to almost 200 oh, really? to properly uh, cover the city. It used mm -hmm. to be close to that number um, in early 2000s and mm -hmm. 90s, of course. Mm -hmm. And, of course, with different things happening and people retiring, you just couldn't yeah. fill it Literally. fast enough. Mm -hmm. um, but. Yeah, I, I think that there could be, that, that could be um, warranted because you're paying a lot of people you know, with four officers, with three officers yeah. in a department. Think of the health care and the insurance yeah, and yeah. you know the chief of police. and the, There's a lot of money that could be used towards something more centralized, especially with mm -hmm. municipalities that are larger, that border smaller ones. That yeah. could handle different exactly. things. Are the other municipalities, cities, whatever, uh, in the you know proximity, to have positions similar to yours? Um, they're more similar with regards to Corporal Hammer side. So, like I know, Swatter Township has an officer that is assigned to community relations. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe Derry Township has one as well. Mm -hmm. Susquehanna Township Chief Martin is just amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure who that designated person is, mm -hmm. um, but. There are, there are people uh, at different departments that are assigned for community relations or community building. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not common that you have a civilian role on the civilian mm -hmm. side to help, oh, yeah. okay. um, which brings a different dynamic to play. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not familiar with that aside from in other larger cities. Yeah. Have the church has been cooperative with uh, your, you know, your role and the kind of things you're doing. Have you found the ministers? Uh, understanding your role and also mm -hmm. wanting to work with you. I would like to get more into more of our um, more of the religious conversation with a lot of people um, mm -hmm. and finding out what we can do to help. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of churches that have reached out okay. uh, with mm -hmm. um, 
coming by for their community days and mm -hmm. uh, neighborhood block parties as right. well as parades or yeah. different issues that they have um, active, active shooter training for their security at their churches mm -hmm. oh, we've wow. had so you yeah. know different things like that that people have reached out to me on right. which we've been able to be a resource on and help set mm -hmm. those things up um, we would love to see more uh, more involvement, um, and we're really looking forward to that. Hmm. Well, that's awesome. And I never thought about the religious community not be such a way of also going to some of those congregations, introducing yourself, mm -hmm. letting them know your role and how you could be of service to them in many ways. That makes sense. Well, mm -hmm. same, same thing, and I'm sure yeah. you have the mm -hmm. same relationship with businesses than uh, mm -hmm. you know the private store owners, especially mm -hmm. the smaller mom and pop stores. Mm -hmm forthcoming, working with you, understanding your role? Yeah, business relations. I mean, mm -hmm. all about community involvement and relationships and uh, the business community I'm familiar with just from previous lives mm -hmm. of, you mm -hmm. know, getting that support and understanding right. and knowing some of those people in the religious community. I know a lot of pastors personally, mm -hmm. uh, so those relationships are good, mm -hmm. especially in, you know, the Steelton and Twitter Township and those areas in the city. Uh, I used to go to church in the city. Mm -hmm. um, for about 10 years mm -hmm. with a couple of different congregations. So those relationships are good, right. but we'd love to expand upon that as well. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. I know one time we talked about having like an advisory board, citizens advisory mm -hmm. to the police. They still talk about those things? Absolutely. Like, uh, it's mm -hmm. actually part of my plan. Um, when I came on, mm -hmm. you know, I was asked kind of what things we want to prioritize and work on. Mm -hmm. And the Citizens Police Academy is one, as well as the Citizens Advisory Council is another. Mm -hmm. uh, first thing I really wanted to do was get in and try to talk to neighbors and really listen. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to come in and just start marching orders right. and stuff. Let's come in and listen. Let's find out what the issues are, the quality of life yeah. issues are, because mm -hmm. you'll find out that maybe, you know, you think, or the police department's like, well, there's a lot of drug activity going mm -hmm. over here at this block. You talk to neighbors, they're like, we just want our trash picked up. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really? I was like, yeah, we just... <laughs> We just want the trash picked up right. and people stop pulling in my handicapped space. That's what we want oh, on this yeah. block. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, we can mm -hmm. help you with that. Right. You know, and mm -hmm. you're looking at it 10,000, you know, yeah. you know, feet in the air. And, you know, it's really you come down ground level with the people who are there every single day when you yeah. leave. That's mm -hmm. right. They're here and it's like people mm -hmm. keep blocking me in. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's just one yeah. example. But yeah, I, sure. it comes up more often than you think. Mm -hmm. um, or... Uh, Oh my gosh, what are some other things? Illegal dumping mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. or loud music, nuisance calls. Oh, you yeah. know, because a lot of times mm -hmm. the loud music's just, you know, when officers can actually respond to those priority, mm -hmm. it's normally over by then. Yeah. Uh, you know, right. maybe, you know, 20 minutes or so, and then by the time it's not loud music anymore. Mm -hmm. And this is an ongoing thing, so. And, and you know, it really does boil down to just that. It's mm -hmm. like, hey, wait a minute, this is my issue, all that other big stuff, y'all can yeah. handle that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, I got that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, indeed. And, and you may think that's small, but it's not small. It's not it's because not it's, it's impacting it you. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps going from there. And that's what we're finding out. Mm -hmm. Well, getting back to your evolving yourself, okay, mm -hmm. since you graduated, sure. okay, from Messiah. Did you see this as a path potentially for you? No. You no? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> uh, I went to Messiah, majored in public relations mm -hmm. and oh, crisis comm. Mm -hmm. So it kind of yeah. it got into next, but I went into hospitality for 10 years. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that's how I best and know you. Hospitality and then from there, sales and development and then lobbying and fundraising and then, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, uh, government relations and then kind of getting back into the city policy. It's my second mm -hmm. time with the Harrisburg City, uh, mm -hmm. working in the city. First was under Mayor Linda Thompson's administration, mm -hmm. doing program. Um, program administration and then you know helping with Parks and Rec okay. and planning the Capona festivals and different things okay. like that sure. um, but this time with the police department so no I didn't see this <laughs> happening at all but mm -hmm. just being open to whatever God's plan is. Mm -hmm. well, it's good mm -hmm. stuff yeah. it really is well you know when you look at all these community agencies around mm -hmm. the YMCA the, Na the Boys and Girls Club one down the line, how important of a role do those agencies play especially in terms of our youth but really how do they impact the entire family unit they do. You know. mm -hmm. So tell us, I know you work with the Boys and Girls mm -hmm. Club, so you know. They re they're really important. Mm -hmm. They're really um, instrumental in helping to shape a child's development, especially mm -hmm. when you have parents who are doing all that they can, mm -hmm. you know, working a job or two or yeah. three or six right. to really try to provide for the family. There may be other things going on as well in which they do not have the means to really um, keep or produce the life that they really want for their family, mm -hmm. what they're yeah. working hard towards. So uh, the YMCA, Salvation Army, you know, mm -hmm. Big Brothers, Big Sisters, there's a lot of people that yeah. help 
fill that gap and try to do that. So right. they're really shaping the development of our children. The school district mm -hmm. is really helping shape the development of our children. A lot of times they spend more time there than they may with their own parents. That's yeah, right. that's and it's mean. a positive, safe place for them. So mm -hmm. that's what we want. And our department is trying to double down our efforts to get out and meet them and do wellness checks and do visits in those uh, areas. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamie and Harvey's great up at the Y. There's a mm -hmm. lot of people mm -hmm. who we're forming these partnerships with. Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually having a neighborhood block party um, created this program this year called Blockside Barbecues. Oh, uh, okay. And so we're really working to double down that effort. Actually, one's going on at the Neighborhood Center next week. Um, okay. That'll be taking place. Well, this will be in August, so yeah. Okay. Oh, that's good that's stuff. Wonderful. What's it called again? The uh, Blockside Barbecues. So it was, you know, mm -hmm. I, I said, you know, the commissioner's heart is to really get out into the community a lot mm -hmm. more, Chief Carter. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, well, maybe we just need to meet people where they are, on their blocks, yeah, find right. out what's going on, mm -hmm. and what brings people together best more than uh, fellowship in over food. Mm -hmm. So we bring that? out the grill, we pay for the grill, we pay mm -hmm. for the food, uh, and we just say, hey, neighborhood block captains, we just need people to come out. Yeah. We'll bring the officers to you. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? So we have officers out mm -hmm. that will get out their cars, and yes, they are here to mm -hmm. talk and answer questions, get to know them. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're in. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we hit Zarker Street, we've hit uh, 19th and Foster, we've hit uh, Summit and Walnut Streets. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna be in Midtown uh, next week and then a neighborhood center, which is closer upper Midtown. Mm -hmm. And then we're going up uh, 7th and Radnor. So there's a lot of places mm -hmm. around the city mm -hmm. we're trying to get out. Uh, Manada Street, closer to Paxton Street. So there's a lot of places we're yeah. trying to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, we really need a lot of people's help to make it happen. So. Yeah. Well, you know, our show is always taped in advance. So sometimes sure. people may show up at a block and say, wait a minute, I thought this was a block. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what, they could, to know. <laughs> what they could do is they could uh, follow us on Twitter, Community yeah. HPD, yeah. Okay. Uh, or Harrisburg City's uh, website, harrisburgpa.gov. Mm -hmm. okay. Or they can look us up, uh, Harrisburg Community Relations on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're there. So like us on Facebook. I like it. Oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, Real good stuff. It. Yeah. So, you know, there's so much going on. And, and one of the things that uh, people always talk about is whether or not uh, we're becoming a more diverse society, a more polarized society. And I just wonder what your thoughts are in terms, I know we only have a couple minutes here, in terms of your thoughts are in terms of where Harrisburg is going. You know, we have all these silos, but hopefully there's a greater, because we had a wonderful Dolphin County diversity. Uh, uh, what was that like? Multicultural. Uh, Multicultural. The fast. form. Mm -hmm. That was excellent. Yeah. Yeah, it's Zembo. It's Zembo. Yeah. 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 You were there. I saw you. Yeah, yeah. I was there. <laughs> what was your take on that? I know we only have a minute or so. Are we becoming more diverse? Can we do a better job or what? I think there's always room for improvement mm -hmm. in anything you can do. Sure. Um, you know, there was a pastor who said something to me that's never left. It says, you know, when God calls you home, it's because mm -hmm. you've done your job or, you know, you've gotten the mission across mm -hmm. in some way. Maybe you mm -hmm. don't see it or understand it. So mm -hmm. if we're all here for a purpose, that means we have more inside of us to give. Mm -hmm. And I believe that when we continue to give, we're able to, mm -hmm. you know, receive more back. And it really blesses someone else. So I try to live my life for the service of others, for my family, for my wife, for my son. Mm -hmm. And so in doing that in this role, it's just, you know, staying committed to that. Yeah. So I answer that to say that there are opportunities to continue to advance. Fantastic. On that note, I want to thank uh, Blake Lynch, man. You're doing a great yeah, job. Absolutely. Thank you so Keep much for having me. Doing. Yes, thank Blake you. Blake is welcome. the uh, policing coordinator for the city of Harrisburg and is doing a fantastic job. Hope that you'll continue to support mm -hmm. uh, the Harrisburg City Police and all that they do and all that they're trying to do to make a, uh, a more impactful statement uh, to our community. They really are there to protect and serve. And they got the right man with the plan, yeah, Blake all. Lynch, well, to bring this all together. Yes, hey, thank you so much for watching this program, Life Esteem. Hope to see you next time. Have a great day. Goodbye.